Hi students, welcome to the science class. In last class, under the chapter of body movements, we discussed about different types of the joints which are present in the human body. And in today's session, we are going to discuss how the joints are present in different types of the animals, different types of the insects. So that will be discussed in today's session. So that is about 8.2 gait of animals. How the animals has the different types of the joints. In the humans, we, we are going to see the specialized structures like hands, legs and also we, we are going to see different types of the joints which are present in the hands, in the fingers and also in the legs. So with that joints, it is possible to move our body from one place to the other place. So for that, the joints are only helpful for the movement of our body, movement of our hand throughout the all direction. But in the case of the animals, what are helpful, how the joints are present in the case of some of the animals or some of the insects, we are going to see that one only. First animal or the first insect we are going to consider that is nothing but earthworm. Earthworm. See, earthworm even doesn't has the any bones. When we are going to see the human body, human body has the strong structures called the bones. With the help of the bones, some of the muscles with the, on the bones, we are going to see muscles are present. And the bones are, they are present in the bones to attach two bones, there is a joint is present. With the help of the joint, it is easy, it is a very easy to move our body or it is very possible to make any movements. But when we are going to see the earthworm, in the earthworm body, there is a no bones are present. But it, how it is going to move, how it is starts to move, it starts to move with help of its body. Its body, it is made up of number of rings. I am considering here, if you are going to see the structure of the earthworm, if you are going to see the structure of the earthworm, the body it contains number of circular shapes. See, so with the help of this body structure, the earthworm will move. What happened here? See, when it starts to move from one point to the other point, it attaches, it sticks its rear end. I am taking it as a front end. I am taking it as a front end and it is a rear end. So, first it sticks it, its rear end to the surface, earth surface or any surface. First, it sticks its rear end to the surface and it extends its body towards front. It extends its body towards front and after onwards, it sticks its front body to the surface and it contracts its back body towards the front. It contracts its back body towards the front. Again, at this point, it attaches its rear end to the surface and again it extracts, it expands its front body to the, towards the front and again it contracts its rear body to the front side. By the conti continuous extraction, expansion and the contraction, it helpful to make, it helpful to move the earthworm. This is the condition how the earthworm it is moves from one point to the other point. See. <clears throat> but one question arises in your mind, how the earthworm is going to stick its body to the earth surface, the body has a, some of the hair like structures, we have the some of the different types of the different types of the structures in our body that is the legs and the fingers, isn't it? But in the earthworm, we are not going to see any legs are present, any fingers are present, but the hair-like structures are present in its body. And also, it releases some liquid on its body. With the help of these hair-like structures and the liquid, it sticks its body to the earth's surface and it will be helpful for the movement of its body from one place to the another place. And this number of hair-like structures which are present on the earthworm body that are called it as a bristles. What they are? Bristles. These are helpful for to stick its body to the earth's surface. 
is it clear so this is the moment of the earth form how it moves next i am going to consider another one important organism that is nothing but the snail second one it is snail how the snail moves so when you are going to see the snail on the body of the snail we are going to see a hard cover is present this hard cover this is nothing but a just look like a snail this is a hard cover this hard shell is present on the back of the snail have you got understood a snail is present but it is not helpful for the moment of the, for the moment of its body what it is snail what it is it is called it as a shell of the snail so what it is present in the snail that will be seen now observe a snail in your garden or in a field have you seen the rounded structure in it carries on its back this is called as a shell and it is the outer skeleton of the snail but it is not made of bones the shell is a single unit and does not help in moving from place to place see here on the body of the snail we are going to see the shell this shell it is not made by the bones it is not made by the bones and it is not helpful for the movement of its body but it is only helpful to 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 take the face inside the shell it is helpful for to take its face snail face inside the shell for to protects its body from the other any activities or other organisms i got understood if when it is moves for example if you are going to touch the snail when it is moving suddenly it goes under the shell isn't it have you seen that one so this shell it is only helpful for the snail to protect its body and it is called it as a shell it not made up of the bones it is made up of the calcium you have to remember here these are the calcium shells next place the snail on a glass plate and watch it when it starts to moving carefully lift the glass plate along with the snail over your head observe its movement from the beneath see you have to place that snail on a glass plate transparent glass plate and when it starts to move you have to lift the that glass on your head and you have to see the movement of the snail under beneath under that glass you are going to see a thick surface a thick part of the snail which is get attached to the glass and the snail is utilized as the thick surface for the movement that is nothing but uh, this is the thick surface it is made up of the muscles have got understood using this thick muscle the snail is a try to move from one point to the other point a thick structure and the head of the snail may be come out of the opening of the shell and the thick structure it is not a food it is made up of the strong muscles now carefully lift the glass plate the wave of motion of the foot can be seen the movement of a snail slow or fast compared to the earthworm but when you are going to lift that glass on your head you are going to see the structure how it is moves you are going to see a one wave like structure because due to the movement of the snail so but when you are going to compare the movement of the snail with the earthworm the movement of the earthworm it is somewhat fast rather than the somewhat the uh, snail here have got understood see then again we are going to take another one insect or another one organism how it moves that is nothing but the cockroach how the cockroach moves have you seen ever cockroach how the cockroach moves have you seen ever have you seen ever how the cockroach moves tell me have you seen ever yes how it moves tell me tell me prithvi how it moves ah it has a three pairs of legs cockroach has a three pairs of legs and also the 
wings are also present on the body of the cockroach with the help of the the legs and also with the help of the wings it can move and also it can fly cockroach is it can fly and it can move with the help of the legs and also with the help of the wings cockroaches will walk climb as well as a fly in their air they they have a three pairs of legs this helps in walking the body is covered with a hard outer skeleton this outer skeleton is made up of number of plates joined together and that permits the movement there are two pairs of wings are attached to the body behind head the cockroaches have a distinct muscles those near the legs move the legs for the walking see here on the body of the cockroaches we are going to see different types of the plates the plate like structures are present if you are going to see the cockroach body it is just like this and also we can see the legs are present see on the body of the cockroach the plates are present plate like structures are present these plate like structures are helpful for the movement even the cockroaches has three pairs of leg with the help of that three pairs of leg the cockroaches moves and also the cockroach has two pairs of wings on its head with the help of that wings the cockroach is usually fly in the air then next we are going to consider the birds how the birds are going to move the birds are also having one pair of leg and a one pair of wings here so in the birds the legs two legs the front two legs are converted into wings when we are going to see the legs in the animals normally animals has the four legs isn't it the cat the dog the cow all the animals have four legs so but in the case of the birds the two front legs are then converted into wings the humans are also just having a four legs but that two leg legs are converted into hands like that in the birds two legs are converted into wings with the help of the two legs they are they can walk from one point to the other point and with the help of the wings they can fly in the air see birds fly in the air and walk on the ground some birds like ducks and swans also swim in water the birds can because their bodies are well suited for the flying see here the birds are only going to be fly in a on, on a long time why because the body structure of the birds it is somewhat helpful for the flying because when we are going to see the bones which are present in the body the bones hollow bones are present in the bird's body hollow means if you are consider the one bone it is present in a any bird i am taking it is a one bone which is one bone which is present in a bird the bone it is hollow means inside the bone inside the bone there is a nothing is present it is hollow it is a empty that makes the weight of the bird it is very less have got understood weight of the bone will be very less due to the hollowness that's why the body of the birds it is very helpful to fly in the air next it is fish the next organism which we are going to consider which that has the moment it is nothing but the fish when we are going to see the fish body when we are going to see the fish body it is just to look like a boat isn't it it is just to look like a boat isn't it the body of the the body shape of the fish it is just to look like the shape of a boat boat isn't it this shape it is called it as a streamlined shape why it is called it as a streamlined shape because it helps for the movement of the fish under the water i got understood so 
at the two ends at the two ends the thickness of the body of the fish it is very less compared to the middle part at the front part also the thickness of the body of the fish it is a very less and the thickness of the body of the fish at the rear part also very less compared to the middle part and this is structure it is called it as a streamlined structure this structure it is helpful for the movement of the fish under the water when it starts to move in the water it first it bends the front part towards the left side it front it bends its first part the front part towards the left side and the back part towards left side like this after onwards again it bends its front part towards the right side and back parts towards the left side so when it moves in the water it moves like this it moves like this i got understood due to that the friction which, which is comes into play in the water that will be avoided by its body this structure the body which has the fish it is called it as a streamlined shape <coughs> and how the snakes are moves the last organism which we are going to consider it is nothing but the snake how the snakes are moves see here you see in a snake it and it's a slither does it move straight snakes have a long backbone they have a many thin muscles they are connected to each other even so they are far from one another you have to see when we are going to consider the earthworm earthworm doesn't has a bones but the snakes has a long bone see what they are given snakes have a long backbone they have a many thin muscles they are connected to each other even though they are from from one another muscles also interconnected with the backbone ribs and the skin the snake's body curves into many loops each loop of a snake gives its forward push by pressing against the ground since its a long body makes many loops and each loop gives its the push the snake moves forward very fast and not in a straight line see here when we are going to consider body of a snake it is made up of a long bone and it, this bone it is made up of small bones it is get attached with the small bones and also the muscles so when it starts to move it always moves in like a waves isn't it so when it is bends the it pushes when it is bends these small bones are going to be bent here due to the number of joints are present continuously in the bones that bones are helpful to bend the body of the snake so when it is when the body of the snake curves at one end it pushes forward the body of the snake the continuous motion the continuous pushing of the body at a every case of the every case of the loop it continues it starts to move and it gets the speed using the loops the uh, the body of the snake will be move very fast trip that will be given in here the snake's body curves into many loops each loop of the snake gives its forward push pressing against the ground and this loop this loop will be press the ground for example i am considering here this is the tail end this is the tail end of the snake this is the front end of the snake when it makes one loop this loop will pushes the land in a backward direction this the loop will be pushes the ground in a backward direction and the body will be moves in the front direction have got understood by using the loops this is called it as a loop this is called it as a loop it is just the snake will be moves just like this isn't it in the every loop it pushes the land in a backward direction and the body will be moves in the front direction 
it pushes the body in the backward direction and it moves in the front direction is it clear next we have learned about the use of the bones and the muscles for the movements of different elements pahali and bojo have many questions in their sacks about the different movements in the animals so must you have having many unanswered questions buzzling in your minds the ancient greek philosopher aristotle in his book gate of animals asked himself these questions why do different animals have the body parts that they do have and how do these body parts help for the animals to move the way they do see here when we are going to see different parts of the body of a different animals for the monkey we have the tails we are going to see the tails isn't it and also in the cows and it also in the and other animals like uh, dogs and pigs they have the tails but why they are have the tails why they helpful for the movement of its body why the animals are having that tails that question will be arises in your mind and answer for that question will be given by the greek scientist is the name was greek philosopher aristotle he is write one book that is gate of animals in that book he give the answer for that and he is also asked that question what are the similarities and differences in these body parts between the different animals how many body parts are needed by the different animals for moving from place to place why two legs for humans and four legs for the cows see some of the questions arises in your mind why the different animals are having a different body type body parts for example humans having the legs two legs these two legs are sufficient for for move from one place to the another place for the human beings but why the cow dog and all the animals have the four legs these questions will be arises in your mind so many questions and the, perhaps we have looked for some answers through our activities in this chapter and we need to look for many more answers but we get some of the answers from this chapter that is why the snakes having the loops like structure when it is moves and also how the earthworm moves and how the snails moves what are the body structures present in the birds what are the body structures present in the snails that will be get by that the answer will be get by in this chapter that is a body moments but even though the sum of the questions are not answers that questions which arises in our mind why the some animals has the four legs why the humans has a two legs why the two legs are sufficient why the two legs are not sufficient for the movement of the body of the animals but why, how it is sufficient for the animals that some of the questions will be arises in your mind that will be answered that we get the answer by the book called gate of animals written by aristotle and this completes your one of the chapter that is body movements thank you in next session we are going to see your next lesson thank you